let me show you how we can use Lightroom to create this dark silver look for this image. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. My goal for this shot is to separate the subject from the background by making use of a lot of masking. But first things first, let's start with some basic adjustments. I want to start things by cropping this image. I want to take out a good chunk from each side and thus we bring the focus more onto the subject. I'm also relying on the rule of thirds here. I'm going to place the subject right here on this line for that. I do want to have a little bit of sky left in the image. So this is looking like a good crop. And then let's go into the basic panel and there are only three things I want to do. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which will lessen the overall contrast. And in turn, we get more control over the contrast ourselves. Then I want to adjust the white balance. And since I want to create a dark silver look, I'm going with a colder white balance, meaning I'm going to drop the temperature for that. Let's drop it quite a bit until the blue tones are very noticeable right around here looks good. And since the colors are becoming a little bit too strong, I'm also going to bring down the vibrance. Perfect. And since we will do most of the editing with masking, that's already it for the basic adjustments. Now, one thing you might notice is the noise. This is very visible and it becomes more visible as we crop the image. So before we head into the masking stuff, let's apply some denoise. We're going to head into the detail step for this and all we need to do is to just click the denoise button under the noise reduction menu. In here, I'm not changing anything. I'm leaving the amount at 50. All I'm going to do is to hit the enhance button. Depending on your system, this process will take a while, but the result is very worth it, as you can see. Now we have a clean looking image and we can start working on things locally. For that, let's open up the masking panel. And at this point, we can start separating the subject from the background. This is a perfect image to use Lightroom's AI masks. For this example, let's click on background, which will create a mask for the background. Now, what I want to do with this mask is to make the background darker, but I don't want to affect the whole background. My plan is to create a light effect coming in from the top left corner of the image. So we need to further modify this mask. We can do that by clicking on subject and I'm going to subtract a radial gradient for this light effect. Let's make it rather thin, but a little bit longer like this. I'm also going to rotate it to fit the direction of the light. And I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to get a more natural light effect. Plus, I'm also going to overlap the subject like this. So it will later look like the light is shining in behind the subject. This will further help to separate the two areas of the image. Plus it will also create a nice effect. Then there's one more thing we need to do. If you now make the background darker by dropping the exposure, we will get the desired effect. But since we are not selecting this bottom part of that tree, things will start to look a little bit too unnatural. So we need to further modify this mask and I'm going to add a linear gradient, just dragging it up like this. And this way I'm making sure to also select the bottom part of this tree, as you can see when I'm activating the mask overlay. This way we are getting a more natural result. Okay, that's it for the first mask. We simply drop the exposure, making the background darker and adding this light effect. I want to continue working on the background. I'm going to use a linear gradient. And with that linear gradient, I want to cover pretty much all of the right side of the image, even overlapping our subject a little bit. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure to add this dark look to the image on the right side. I'm going to drop it quite heavily. I'm also going to drop the temperature, which will introduce more cold blue tones to the background of the image. And I think the blue tones start to become a little too saturated. So I'm also going to drop the saturation for that. Okay, that's looking nice. Now I'm basically working my way through the image using different linear gradients in different positions to get a more natural effect. Right now you can see the right side is super dark and we do have this very strange gradient going from bright on the left to dark on the right side. We want to balance things a little more. So I'm going to use another linear gradient. This time I'm coming up from the bottom right like this. I think this is looking good. And what I want to do is to again simply bring down the exposure making the bottom darker. 
I also want the very bottom part of the image to be in the darkest area of this shot. So I'm going to drop the exposure quite a bit here. Okay, you can start to see how we're making the subject pop with all these different linear gradients. At this point, the bottom left corner is a little bit too bright still. Again, we can simply use a linear gradient to fix that. Let's drag one up like this. I do think with this one, I don't want to affect the subject in the foreground. So we need to find a way to get rid of this selection right here. One way we can do that is to intersect this linear gradient with the background. So we're going to click on those three dots for that, choose intersect mask with, and here we are choosing select background. Perfect. Now we can start making this area darker by simply dropping the exposure again. Wonderful. And I do think I want to make the far right side even darker. So let me use one more linear gradient for that. I don't want to select the sky up at the top. So we need to subtract that. So simply click on subject and choose select sky. And again, all we need to do now is to drop the exposure. Since we're dropping the exposure quite heavily with all these masks, it's important to keep a close eye on the histogram since we don't want to underexpose anything. But right here you can see things are looking pretty decent. I also want to make the far right side a little colder. So let's bring down the temperature thing right around here looks perfect. Enough with the darkening of the background for now. What I want to do next is to add some more light coming down from the top to further add contrast between subject and background. So let's create a radial gradient. I usually use these radial gradients for these light effects, but I will also use a linear gradient later on in the editing for this image. So again, with this radial gradient, place the center outside of the image and let's make it a little longer so it's nicely overlapping our subject. Again, we only want to affect the background, not the bird in the foreground. So we need to subtract the subject from this radial gradient, just like this. I think we need to position it a little bit differently. So let's place it a little further up. And for this light effect, what we need to do, simply bring up the exposure. You see how this works very, very nicely. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks to lessen the contrast of the background in that area and just introduce this glowing effect. Wonderful. I think we could make this radial gradient just a little bit brighter like this. Just to give you an idea what a difference this does, let me deactivate this light effect. This was our image before. And here we have the light effect added on top. Looks much better instantly and is really easy to do. Then I do think I also want to add some highlights hitting that tree branch in the foreground. So I'm going to use an object selection mask and let's activate the rectangle select mode right here. Then all we need to do is to draw a rectangle around that tree. As you can see, Lightroom is doing a great job. Now, since we only want to introduce highlights, that means we need to leave the shadows of this tree alone. The light is coming in from the left side. That means we need to subtract the right side. We can do that using a linear gradient. So I'm just subtracting the bottom right side like this. And I think this is looking like a pretty good selection. Now, what I'm going to do to introduce more highlights is to bring up the whites. Wonderful. I want to do the same for the shadows. So let's use another objects mask and select that tree. Then I'm going to subtract the highlights using another linear gradient. So get rid of the highlights like this. And to add these shadows, I'm dropping the exposure very gently. And I'm also dropping the whites. Dropping the whites will make things darker without risking underexposure. So that's just a safe way to do it. Now we're almost done with the masking, but of course we also want to work on the bird itself. So let me create a, another object mask and I'm going to draw a rectangle around that bird. Nice selection. Now I want to improve the highlights of that bird as well. Again, we need to subtract a linear gradient and with that I'm just taking out the shadows right at the bottom part here. Okay, I think that should be fine this way. What I'm going to do in here is to bring up the exposure. You see, this will give this bird some really nice depth effect. I'm also going to bring up the whites like this. 
and we could introduce some texture making the highlights of the bird just a little bit sharper and let's bring up the clarity as well that's looking really really good i specifically want to work on its beak this is a little bit more tricky to target i think i'm just going to use a brush let's set up the brush first i'm going to make it really really small using the mouse wheel and i'm going to just brush over its beak once like this i just want to make it slightly brighter to make it more obvious so i'm going to bring up the exposure like this and this helps tremendously as you can see wonderful finally there's one more thing i want to do i talked about the light effect using the radial gradient now we're going to introduce more light using a linear gradient so with that linear gradient i'm coming down from the top left corner like this making sure to overlap the subject a little bit and all i'm going to do now is to bring down the dehaze and this will help to create some very soft light coming down from this part of the image wonderful and that's the image after just a bunch of masking adjustments nothing else let me deactivate all those masks to see the difference from before to after much more dramatic we have much better focus on the subject just like we needed now let's do a little bit of color grading to finish this off i'm going to skip over the color mixer all i need to do is a little bit of split toning in the color grading panel itself and i want to start with the shadows and of course but since we're aiming for that cold silver look i'm going to use a cold color for the shadows so let's set up the hue with the cold color tone and let's bring up the saturation just a little bit we don't want to make it too obvious just a hint of blues for the shadows and i'm going to use the midtones for the same effect set up the hue to a cold color tone and bring up the saturation i think i'm going a little bit higher with the saturation for the midtones just to have this nice visible blue effect finally we can also head down into the calibration tab that's just something i do for all my images playing around with the blue primary hue and saturation that means i'm going to bring down the blue primary hue which will shift the blue tones more into that cyan color range and i'm also going to bring up the saturation a bit all right this is looking great now the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel so let's do that I'm using the same settings as always. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. Then let's bring up the details all the way up. Of course, we are going to apply some masking while holding down the Alt key and see how we can nicely target the subject. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the finished image using just Lightroom for the editing. So I hope you like this effect. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to add anything in regards of the editing. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video.